special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Have you ever seen a plant online? Maybe it's on Instagram, Facebook, your favorite influencer perhaps is showing it up on YouTube or TikTok or wherever have you. You've thought, right, that's going straight onto my wish list. Yas, vibes, all the rest. A few months later, fast forward, you get it home, you're very happy. Six months later, you realize, what have I done? Probably shouldn't have spent the money. I hate this. Slightly dramatic, maybe, but if you would like to join me in talking about 10 times that Rare House Plants disappointed us, this is the video for you. Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen, and welcome to this video. I'm also wearing my merch, which you cannot see, right here. Link is in the description if you'd like it. There is also my original uh, Long Boys merch as well. Do click down below if you're interested in it. It's very cool. I love it. I basically live in it all the time. I even sleep in these things things because I just buy extra larges and I just doss around the house. It's a good time. It's a good time. Also, my fertilizer is restocked on Amazon. I know I said this last week, but I'm saying it again. If you'd like to buy that and you are in the UK, please feel free to visit the link below as well. I know it's going down a treat. Thank you so much for your feedback. I really, really appreciate it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go over to my Amazon and have a look. Anyway, let's get right into it in no particular order. Here are the 10 plants that I think have disappointed quite a lot of us in our time. Okay, starting with number one, does anybody remember the good old Sussestis? Mirabilis. Hopefully you do, maybe you don't. I actually had this on my wish list in literally, I think I got it the other day, 2019. 2019. My first ever rare planet wish list on this channel had this in, right? I saw it, I was excited, you saw it, you were all excited. We're all excited, we're all loving it. The problem is, the problem is, what we all didn't quite realize was that this plant does not look the same forever. Now it can get quite large, but generally speaking, once it's into its mature form, it actually looks nothing like this. All of the pretty white patterning just sort of goes, it's not there anymore, it's gone, it's gone forever. You get something that kind of looks like a cool-ish shape, I guess, but really it's nothing to write home about. Now personally for me as well, I actually find it really hard to grow. So if you can grow it really well, good for you. If you've kept it looking really pretty, good for you. I guess keep cutting it to keep it dwarfed so it won't reach maturity if you are in it for the pretty patterns because it is a very pretty plant, I'm not knocking it. But I think I speak for all of us when I say that it disappointed us greatly to find that out because honestly, I was really, really sad. It's not the first time a plant has disappointed me, but it's definitely disappointed me. Believe me, guys, I've got so many plants that have disappointed me over the years. I could do like a more personal list. This is more of like a general list of things that I think have disappointed many people. If you want a more personalized list, I'm all for that because, oh my God, oh my God, there are a few. The next disappointing plant. Do you remember Philodendron lupinum? Oh, I do. Now, I love this plant when it came in. And I think all of y'all did. It sold really well, I've got to say. I think it's, I sold it in COVID. It took off really, really well. Loads of people were selling it. It generally did really, really well. We've all been enamored by the cute little vine that is Philodendron lupinum, right? And it grows up, in its defense, it grows up to me the most beautiful, like, lobby, triumphant looking plant, right? It does. It's great. But it takes so long to get there, guys. It takes so long to get there. Not only that, but if you actually want to buy it, you're probably buying it in the smaller form because it takes so long to get there, usually the more expensive form costs you a bit more, right? For this reason. So you buy it in and you'd be very lucky if it ships to you, okay? Because I know I had that problem with my shop. I was shipping them out and honestly, the amount I had to replace was insane. They wouldn't really ship very well. When they are in that vining state, they're extremely brittle. So not ideal. I think it wasn't necessarily just the shipping that disappointed people. I do think it was, in a general sense, it was the amount of time it took to grow. They don't size up very quickly. All the rest, really, and the availability of more mature ones has really put people off. I know that a few people have grown them more mature, and they don't even need to be significantly more mature to look better. Trust me, I'll probably show you a picture of something that's maybe medium-sized, and it does look really good, but getting there not great. You have to deal with that really sort of, it's not gangly, it's just so brittle, the vine. And I don't think it's what people thought it would become, put it that way. I would love to have a mature one. I think the mature ones look absolutely fantastic. Credit to you if you've grown one. But in a general sense, I think it disappointed an 
awful lot of us to find out that that was kind of the tea with that plant. I know it did for me. Oh, next plant. The next plant that, honestly, I do genuinely believe this has disappointed a lot of people. This is the Philodendron Strawberry Shake. Okay. 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 So you do see good ones on Instagram, and this is my point. This is the crux of my point. This is why it has disappointed so many people, right? You see some fantastic ones on Instagram. When they're good, they're really good. You know what I mean? They are really, really, really quite pretty. They photograph really nice. They have a lot of presents. They just look really cool, right? I love them. They're great. But the reality is kind of not that, right? How many times have you bought a young one? How many times have you propagated one? Have you seen what they look like? Have you seen what they look like when you do that? Because I thought it was just me selling my little cuttings of Philodendron Strawberry Shake and them looking terrible. And I'm, I mean, guys, terrible. Like, photographing these plants, like, the day that I had to sell a small one in the shop was just a bad day because I knew that no matter what I did, I could not make this look good, right? There was nothing I could do on planet Earth to make this strawberry shake look good. It wasn't gonna happen. And I thought it was just me. I looked it up on Google and bless your hearts, it's the same for everybody, right? If you're selling in immature, like a really young, I'm talking like this high strawberry shake, you're not in for a good time. You're not in for a good time at all. Absolutely not. They take a really long time to size up and look good. And even then, I do find them quite leggy. I find them way more leggy than things like Pink Princess and stuff like that, stuff that's actually been quite popular. I would say it was worse than that. So when they're good, they're great. But I think a lot of people got enamored by all the stuff you see on Instagram. And to be fair to the growers on Instagram, your plants look brilliant. I am not knocking them, but nobody else's does. <laughs> it really takes something. Now, I've never grown anything that nice, to be honest. One, I don't have the patience. I'm a shop, obviously. I'm going to cut it quicker. But two, I just, I don't, I don't really see myself ever growing something that nice. I've really fallen out of love with Strawberry Shake because of it, because it's not a nice plant to deal with. Not only that, don't know if anybody's noticed this, but in terms of shipping, they don't ship great. They don't ship great. The amount of plants I've had from Thailand and I'd ship them in and they would drop leaves very fast. I'm talking about within 24 hours, they'd be dropping leaves. Not only that, but the variegation, especially with sectoral variegation, the variegation will go brown very, very fast. It does not like being shipped. It's quite a sensitive plant. So all in all, if you love the pain, get one, right? But for the rest of us, I think I speak for a lot of us when I say it's quite disappointing in dealing with the plant day to day, in propagating it, and growing it from small stuff. And just generally, if the variegation isn't as bright as what you see on Instagram as well, that's a bit disappointing because it can look a little bit dishwater-esque. Pause for one second. I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Have you ever thought about creating a website either to sell house plans, sell something else, maybe start a blog, a portfolio, anything of the sort, and just thought, oh my God, I don't know where to start. Well, Squarespace could be exactly what you're looking for. It has a ton of templates. You don't need to know programming or anything like that. And it's super customizable. So you can take any template that is on the website and make it your own. I've been using Squarespace for literally three years now. I switched over to Squarespace for the rare plant shop, for the website for that. And I've recently launched a new plant care brand that has my fertilizer that I also use Squarespace for. If you'd like to set up a website, either for yourself or to sell something online maybe, head to squarespace.com for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me. I will shut up now and we will go back to the video. The next plant I'd like to talk about is slightly controversial. This is, what is it called, guys? It is the Alocasia tanderusa, aka the Alocasia jacqueline. Do you know where I'm going with this? A lot of you might. A lot of you might. So basically, it's been settled on that the name of it is, I believe, Alocasia tanderusa, right? But for a long time, it was going as Alocasia jacqueline, right? Before I get into that, I'd just like to say a few words about how it looks. I'm not usually a fan of this kind of vibe of plant, right? It looks what I would call chlorotic, right? Not saying it is, just saying it looks it. That's the vibe. Now, I do like some plants that look like this. And I think my point is, for me, there are other plants that do it better, right? Great example of that. Fantastic example. Alocasia reticulata, right? That can look a bit chlorotic right? But I just think it does it better. So for me, I would pick that anyway. But that is not why this is disappointing. So the story goes that 
someone, I'm assuming with the first name or surname, I think it's surname, of Jacqueline, found this plant, allegedly, allegedly poached it and named it after themselves and basically tried to pass it off as a new plant. So whether they poached it or not, fine. But they named it and tried to pass it off as a brand new plant. And that's why they named it after. Okay, now it's traceable. Good for you. Now this happened in 2020, but it is said that these species has been around for at least as far back as 2006. So whatever happened, whether it was poached or not, this person was definitely not the person to find it. It definitely wasn't a new thing. I think this is a victim of the 2020. Oh my God, I've got a new thing. Look at this. Like it, it was rife in 2020. We all know this. If you were in the plant community in 2020, by the way wow <laughs> like can you imagine going back to that by the way can you actually imagine going back to that that was a whole world in itself and it got about as toxic as what the makeup community used to be it was really really it was it was quite something to live through to be honest but anyway a lot of people did believe it to have been poached and uh, i think there was a lot of arguments backwards and forwards on facebook i don't think the indonesian sellers were happy with it because they were trying to sell it something else for many years and then this person's come along and changed it and Blah, blah, blah. And there was there was drama. There was drama. East 2020. Of course, there was drama. But eventually, the name has now been settled on as Alocasia tandarusa. Many of you still know it as Jacqueline. And I think the problem is with this plant, a lot of people are still a bit iffy about it because I don't know if people know whether it was poached or not. So this plant does have a little bit of a stigma that's kind of stayed with it, and it always will. I wouldn't have one not because of the stigma, but just because of the way it looks. And I don't I don't personally vibe with it. I'd rather have a few other different types of Alocasia. So that's my reasoning. But for many other people, they actually won't touch the plant. And not because it's like hot or whatever, it's just, I think it's just giving people a bad taste in their mouths. Because stuff like this does, because nobody likes poaching, because it's just, it's consumerism going a bit too far, isn't it really? So that is the tea on Alocasia Jacqueline slash Tandarusa. What did you think? Did you ever have that plant? Did you sell it? Did you stay away from it? Is it poached? Is it not poached? I couldn't find anything concrete because I think a lot of the arguments that happened were on Facebook and I don't think I'm in those groups or they're being deleted or something like that. So I actually, I'm speaking to you now, I don't know whether it was poached. I just know that there was a lot of allegations about it being poached. Genuinely, guys, there are many, 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 many people that own Alocasia Jacqueline today, but it's just a bit tainted by the tea. Bit of a scandal, really. Did someone say scandal? You cannot do a video like this, guys. And I'm sorry, but you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't do a video like this without mentioning the philodendron pink Congo. So this is something that is covered so extensively on the internet. But do you know what, guys? Honestly, I still find people on Facebook that have no idea. Still, even now, years later. I think this started, was it 2018 or 2019? Let's have a look. I believe it was 2019, so it was actually before COVID. So basically, the tea is, I have two full videos on this, which I will link down below if you are interested. But for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to lay it out for you a little bit for context. Somebody in 2019 at the top of the grower pyramid, would we call it, decided to take a regular green philodendron congo and pump it full of different things, shall we say, to turn it pink, right? So the leaves would come out all pink. Now that's well and good and all, I guess, if it's permanent, which it wasn't. Not only that, but they were charging around about $200 a plant in order to provide this onto you. But I guess that's okay, right, if you know that it's going to be temporary, right? Well, that didn't happen. No one was told it was temporary, and it was the work of, I do believe it was Robert McCracken way back when in 2019 that actually figured this out. This is not me figuring this out. I just did videos on it at the time. But he figured out that it was all fake, and then the news broke out. And that's kind of all well and good, except when the news broke out, there were still sellers that were just sort of still trying to scam people and either selling it for loads of money or not telling people that it was fake, essentially. A lot of sellers knowingly knew it was fake even before the news even came out and they still sold it. We had we had a range of responses. I think some people just played ignorant and were like, I don't believe it, I need proof, knowing full well it was probably fake, they just needed to shift the stock, if you know what I mean. I'm deadly serious, guys. We had shops all over the world knowing full well they were fake and still selling them anyway and getting bank. A notable one from the UK was actually Ginger Jungle. That's who I bought my Congo from. From. Don't know if I've ever said that on video, but I feel like, you know what, not looking for any issues, but it was years ago now. So I think we've all moved on enough for me to be able to say where I got it from. Which, by the way, I have photographs on Instagram to prove that it does actually revert. So that's good if you ever need to know. It really does revert in 6 to 12 months. Totally fake. If you're going to buy one, guys, buy one for like $20 or less. Way less. 
and just be prepared for it to be a bit of an unhealthy plant, I guess. They also look real ugly when they revert, so. But of course, the pink Congo could not be left out of this video at all because it's probably one of the number one most disappointing rare plants of all time because that was the point when we realized that the market was actually more serious than we thought it was and there was some serious money at stake for the people at the top, there was serious money at stake for the shops and we could be played for a fool. So I think that turned a lot of heads. Quick note on that, it is still in production, but not only that, they have been trying it with other plants, notably the pink micans, pink melanocrysum, pink dark lord, a lot of philodendron stuff. Watch out. I do have a video on that as well. I would link that below if you want to know. I did a deep dive on this. So if you're interested in all of the scamming, then feel free to watch that. But I think we'll leave it there for the pink congo because it's been done to death on this channel. Oh my God, this plan. Okay. The next plan I'd like to talk about, guys, is the philodendron pariso verde. Now then. This looked great when it came out. It looked great when it entered people's plant holes, myself included. I was never obsessed with it. And I think I've said that from the very beginning. I've never thought, oh my God, this is incredible. I absolutely love this, but I did kind of like it. Okay. I learned to like it a little bit more. I think the more I grew it, but in general, it was all right. It was an all right plant. For a lot of people though, they were kind of obsessed with it and they loved it. Now it was disappointing for a few reasons. And I know this plant has literally disappointed so many people. The first reason I think it has disappointed people is because the growth habit is not quite what people were expecting. So it looks a certain way in all of the really beautiful photographs in Indonesia, Thailand, whoever's selling it. And it looks big and plush and beautiful and great. And it probably a little bit more compact looking. So when you end up getting it and you end up growing in your house, you will discover that the petioles on the plant are extremely long. I mean, they're long, you feel me? And the, how do I put this? The thickness of the leaves is like, oh, honestly, it's paper thin. It's one of the thinnest leaved philodendrons that I think I've come across, to be honest. It's really, really thin. And what it means is it just ends up being very, very I don't want to say flimsy, not in like a brittle way, but it just doesn't, it's not stout. It's not what you'd expect from it because we're used to things like philodendron bilati and things like that, that are more structurally intact. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but it's just, it wasn't what people expected. It was a little bit floppy. It was a bit, it was a bit, you know, it didn't look maybe as good as what it did in a lot of the photographs. That's not the most disappointing thing though. I think we all know what the most disappointing thing was, guys. So essentially that really cool, aerosol, fizzy, modeled variegation, that. <laughs> believe me when I say for some people that disappeared overnight. And I believe it's widely accepted now that the reason for the variegation and the way to induce the variegation is actually heat. Maybe a bit of light, but definitely heat. That seems to give it, like to bring it back. But in general, if you don't have any of those things, you will have a green plant. And I don't just mean gradually. I mean like the next leaf will be small and green. They are, they're a little bit of work to keep. So I think if you're going to have one, you need to be in a more tropical, more tropical setup. It's got to be hotter. If you have noticed that your Pareso Verde does not look very good, that's probably why. So maybe bump the heat, maybe a bit of light. Put it under a nice strong grow light. It'll probably do both for you. And then you should get some, some good yield out of it. But generally speaking, that's probably what it is. It disappointed a lot of people. I think the only thing that it's been good to do, to be honest, is it's a good propagator and stuff like that. Like if it didn't look the way it did and it didn't catfish us with the mottled variegation, I would actually recommend it as a really good beginner, like rare philodendron because it propagates so well. And it, guys, it doesn't really die if I'm honest. So in that sense, it is good. But in a visual sense, I think a lot of people tried to get a shot of these in like 2021, somewhere like that. Maybe even earlier, I'm not, I'm not actually sure. And I'm not so sure they'll ever want them back. I think we're done with Pareso Verde. Let me know if you're not. Let me know if you have one and you love it. Tag me on Instagram if you've got a really nice one because I've said this in the last video, I'm always up for seeing really nice plants that I cannot grow that nice. So hit me up. The next plant is still a sought after plant. This one's a little bit different. This is this is a growth issue, this one. So the next plant I want to talk about, guys, is the Monstera Burley Marks Flame. Beautiful plant. Listen, listen, this is this is great. This was on my wish list for so long. I'll have to find out which wish list it's on. I'm gonna be reacting to some wish lists very shortly, and I'm just gonna do them like sequentially. So it's gonna be in one of those. And I know I talked about it, and I loved it. I think I first saw this thing, funny enough, I think it was on House of Monstera's Instagram like years ago, before they knew that it was Monstera Burley Marks Flame. I'd actually been wanting this plant for years and years. So it wouldn't surprise me if I've mentioned it quite a long time ago. But this plant looks fantastic. And I think it caught it caught people's attention, guys, because it's a Monstera. And Monstera generally, there aren't a ton of different things out there, right? So if you're thinking about, for example, Monstera Delicioso, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different things. But generally speaking, it's just a case of colours. 
that's it, a little bit of sizes. Now, this thing was different. This was visually very different. People were like, oh my God, fantastic, great. And we were all enamored by it. I know I was, I know I was. But this plant genuinely causes me physical pain to grow, okay? This thing doesn't grow. It just, it doesn't grow. I'm not even exaggerating. It does not grow. It doesn't grow. It doesn't grow. And if any of you've got one, please do confirm in the comments that it doesn't grow. <laughs> it doesn't grow. I think that was the main era of disappointment for people. Not only that, but I think if you don't keep it quite well fed, you do, I mean, the plant is like this in general, but you do get very long petioles and not so big leaves. So the ratio there does tend to look a little bit leggy, a bit gangly. And I think that's put people off. I think the number one thing that's put people off though is the growth. I think in some senses, for some people though, this plant has a little bit of redemption because for some people that's good. For example, a lot of Monstera actually grow really quick and they get out of control. And a lot of people don't, they want them, but they won't have them in their house because they just can't handle how quickly they grow. For example, large form Monstera. Who doesn't want one of those? But they're a bit insane to grow. So in that sense, this plant's got something going for it. So select few of you will want one anyway, but I think you're gonna be disappointed if you haven't owned the plant yet by the growth, because I am not exaggerating, guys, when I say this thing grows like a snail. It's crazy. So there's another disappointing plant that I think has disappointed a lot of people. Still on a lot of people's wish lists. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not a good plant. I'm just saying nobody expected that from a Monstera Deliciosa. Lest of all me. Next plant I want to talk about, guys, is the Monstera Adansonia I Mint. I'm talking about the European form. So I think there is like an Indonesian form, a European form. Maybe there's another form. I don't know. But I'm specifically talking about the European form. Now, this plant's had a bit of drama around it, but essentially the history of the plant I know to be allegedly as follows. This is something that somebody just told me once, okay? And I, they seem to be in the know. So take it with what you want. I could be wrong. But the origin story I know of this plant is that it was essentially found inside a grower's greenhouse, I guess, that was clearly growing Adansonii, somewhere in the Netherlands. And a person or a couple of people went along to visit said grower. They asked what this plant was. The grower said, oh, it's horrible. It's in the corner. Do you want it or whatever? And I think the buyers or the initial owner of this plant got the plant for either very, very cheap or basically free. They then proceeded to sell that plant for an in, in very good amount of money, to be honest. I think this was 2020 as well when it debuted and you were looking at about a thousand US dollars, for example, a leaf, which basically, if you don't know, that rivaled the price of variegated Adansonii at the time. So not a small amount, not a small amount. Now, all's well and good. You know what? You sell a plant for what you want to sell it for. I'm not really having a go at that. The disappointment has not come from that, guys. The disappointment for many has come from the lack of transparency that the seller had about essentially whether it was viral or not. There was concerns that it looked a bit chlorotic. I know I said something at some point, just going, mm, don't know about this, whatever. There was a few concerns about it looking a bit dodgy, a little bit chlorotic, a little bit unwell, because it didn't always grow. How do I put this? It didn't always grow with like a flat leaf. Sometimes they were curled up, they're a little bit gnarly. That's sometimes a symptom of maybe a virus of some kind. And again, not too much of a problem, except the seller or sellers, they, they kept the plant very close knit when they were selling it. So it was a very tight knit community of people selling this plant. And it was all very, you know, like this. The problem was when people were asking them, you know, is this plant viral? Have you tested it? They were given out different responses. It ranged from basically, I have no need to test the plant, it's selling well, to, oh, it's tested, it's totally fine, in a very short space of time from one another. Not great, not great at all. The lack of transparency definitely, definitely, definitely caused a stir and it put a lot of people off. Regrettably, there was other drama around this plant that I'm not going to get into in this video, but in a general sense, this put a lot of people off. And it's funny enough, you can actually get this plant for quite cheap today. And I mean cheap, like really cheap. So if you want it, go get it, literally. But again, it's a little bit like the Alocasia Jacqueline. Once something has been there, it kind of sticks. And I just wish it was handled a little bit better, as do I'm sure many of you. I think it gave people quite a scare when they'd spend a lot of money on the plant and then it was like, oh my God, wait, does it have a virus? Oh my God, we've all been there. I know that because I've done that with plants in the past and I bought plants and they've had viruses. Not great. Spent a lot of money. Well, I lost a lot of money, we should say. Right, let's talk about the Aglaonema pictum tricolor. And you're probably thinking, what is wrong with that plant? Well, not a lot. Honestly, not a lot. So if you don't know what this plant is, this plant is known as basically being... It's basically the internet's... It's the camouflage plant, right? It's what, it's what it is. There might be one or two other camouflage plants out there. But for us, in this little corner of YouTube, this is the camouflage plant, right? It's a very, very nice plant. 
planned. Now, this disappointed people, I almost want to say on arrival, to be honest, because, well, really, I don't think people knew enough about the growth habit. Yeah, right, they're a bit challenging to grow. Fine, right? That's by the by. That's what happens when you take in plants. That's just the game you play, okay? That's the game you play. But I think what disappointed people was a lot of the sellers that were taking pictures of these plants were taking pictures top down. And you might be thinking, right, okay, so. So the thing that I think people didn't quite pick up on was the the overall growth habit of the plant. So the plant, although it may look bushy and you can grow them a bit bushy, I'm not saying you can't. Some people have done it. Generally speaking, in terms of a bell curve though, they don't really grow that way in our homes, in the environment that you or I would give it, right? They grow a little bit more like a palm tree, if I'm honest. So you do get like a long, call it a stem, and then you just get a little bit of foliage at the top, quite literally like a palm tree. And the problem when sellers were taking pictures top down of these plants is that you couldn't see that. I don't think the sellers were being deceptive. I think they were just trying to get a nice photograph of the plant. I don't think it was done deceptively because I think when Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor came out, nobody was really doing anything untoward, if you know what I'm saying. The community wasn't really like that in 2019. I mean, I say that, Pink Congo kind of came up, but if you think about it, honestly, guys, it wasn't that bad. I don't believe sellers were doing that deliberately at all. But I think the damage it caused was people just weren't quite clued up on how they actually grow. You get them into your house, you think it looks really cute, but all you know, all your photographs of your collections are all side on and it just, it don't fit. It doesn't fit into your collection. You've got to photograph it from a certain way and it's just, it's not a vibe anymore. I think a lot of people spend money on them because they were expensive. They were expensive. And I think... They probably sold them again. A lot of people have, and I don't know how many people still have them or want them. I don't think they're mainstream anymore. They weren't fully mainstream anyway, but they were definitely a lot more popular than what they are now. And I honestly think the growth habit has a lot to answer for. Oh, do I still like the plant? Yeah, I think they're great. Do I think they're beautiful? Yeah, absolutely incredible. When you grow them beautifully, and again, some people can. I've seen it on Instagram. I really have. They look great. But for most of us, bit disappointing, guys. Who's with me on that? Because to be, able, to be fair, before I got them in my shop, I didn't know they grew like that. I bought them in thinking, oh my God, yes, because I had that on a wish list too. Don't know which one it was. It was probably 2019. I don't know. But I got that in and I didn't know. I had no idea that they grew like that till I got it myself. And I was like, I think I must have asked Ben at the time. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> what is this? It was like, that's your picked them track. I was like, no, there's a mistake. So it even disappointed me. So if you were left disappointed, no judgment here. Okay, then we're now going to talk about, are you ready? We're going to talk about the Monstera Carstenianum, also known as Peru at one point. But I'm talking about the variegated form. This, again, I am a broken record, guys. This was on my wish list too, and I know it was on many of yours. This was very much less mainstream as well. I think I'd only seen one or two good photos of this plant. I've later come to figure out why, to be honest. Now, it's a beautiful plant, and you know what it is, guys? It is tough, right? The original green form of Monstera carstenianum, or Peru, whatever you want to call it, I think it should be carstenianum now. It's in a lot of garden centers. You can buy, like, and I mean, like, huge pots of it, like, huge, 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 huge pots. Loads of it. It is in abundance. You will not struggle to find this plant. It grows quite well, to be honest. It does need a little bit more feeding, but it does grow really, really well. It's great. It's not the quickest, but it's good. It's quite tough, but that's only if it's green. Because let me tell you something. I, and like many of you, I was not prepared for that level of crispiness, of lack of growth, of almost straight up rotting sometimes that this plant actually gives you. Now, obviously my background is in more of a chop and prop sense because I'm a seller. So I'd buy some in, I'd grow them a little bit as a vine, I'd cut them down and I'd, I'd propagate them. But the damage suffered to the leaves in propagation was immense. The only time that a leaf stayed really, really nice, it had, to be honest, minimal variegation, certainly not sectoral. If it had sectoral variegation, it would just crisp. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it didn't like the feed I was giving it years ago. I don't even know. But I do know I'm not the only one with this problem. And I do know that even now when I see them for sale, I still see it happen. I see someone selling one and they've got, you know, like a two leaf cutting and it's got variegation. But the really variegated part, the really nice yellow part is very, very crispy and it's barely there. It does happen. I've seen some gorgeous pictures on Etsy and other places. I'm not saying it can't be grown. I'm saying, obviously, I think people either have an affinity for this plant or you don't. And I know personally, I'm in the don't category. Having said that, that is in my shop. It's high humidity. Maybe they don't like that. Maybe if I grew it in my house, it would grow brilliantly. Who knows? I'm sure I grew it better in my old shop, actually. I think I grew it better in my old shop, and I think I grew it quite well in my house. But since I moved it to the unit, I, I didn't grow it very well. I've got loads of it still, I just haven't cut it. But maybe it don't like being too humid. 
Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've grown that and you do grow it like real sexy and you don't get it to burn, let me know. Uh, let us all know because I know a lot of us are still fighting with this plant. A lot of us gave up the good fight. It was worth a lot of money in 2020. Yes, I know, as with everything. It was worth an awful lot of money and I do believe a lot of people have given up on them. They're quite affordable now. That just goes to show that I don't think anyone cares anymore. I think it's disappointed a lot of people just with the, just the headache to grow. And once you've had a lovely variegated patch that's gone crispy, there goes your Instagram. Do you know what I mean? There goes your Instagram picture. It's not happening for you anymore. So in that sense, I think it's put a lot of people off. There are better things out there, to be honest, that are variegated. I'm just saying. I do love the plant, though. Honestly, if I could grow it brilliantly, I would have it. But maybe I might try again at some point. And that was the 10th plant that has disappointed us in one way or another at some point in time. Is there any plants that have disappointed you when you bought them? It could be this year. It could be the very beginning of your plant journey. It could have been the height of COVID in 2020. Do let me know what I've missed. I know I've probably missed a few. I'm more than happy to do another one of these videos if you'd like. But let me know what you think about anything I've said. Is there anything that you completely disagree with? You think, no, literally, I love that because there is always one in the comments I guarantee you someone will be like, listen, my Pareso Verde looks voluptuous, stout, beautiful, mottled, and I'm growing it in minus two degrees. Like there's always somebody. So good on you. Let's hear from you. I really want to read the comments and have a look. With that said, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could do that too. My merch, I will stand up very briefly. My merch, again, is in the description of this video. It is on teespring.com. We have loads of sizing. It's not done by me, it's done by Teespring. But we have all the things there. I've got a few different things. I've got hoodies, sweatshirts, things like that. So if you fancy it, head on over. Personally, I like, as I said before, wearing the larger ones. I just feel a bit cooler, you know. But they look really sick, these t-shirts, tucked into jeans. Love that. Always a vibe. And I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for putting up with my really random, not so planty background. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.